KCAL is on the air for November 15, 1940. Good evening and welcome to the mystical studios of KCAL coming to you from the Provino Family Art Gallery in downtown Nicholasville. Take me out to the ball game, sung by Edward Meeker, Edison Record. <laughs> Casey was baseball mad, had the fever and had it bad, just to root for the hometown through every shoe, Casey Blue. On a Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go to see a show, but Miss Kate said no, I'll tell you what you can do. Take me out to the ball game, take me out with the crowd, buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks, I don't care if I never get back, let me root, root, root for the home team, if they don't win it's a shame, for it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> players by their first name, told the umpire he was wrong all along, good and strong. When the score was just two to two, Casey, Casey knew what to do, just to cheer up the boys she knew, she made the gang sing this song. Take me out to the ball game, take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. What do you say, Lou? What do you say? Huh? What do you say? All right. How are you, buddy? Uh -huh. All right, it's great to be out of the closet. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, how do you like my ball club, Lou? Hey, all these people going to be at the ball game today? Certainly. Oh, it's going to be a great game. Well, it should be. Hey, Abbott. What? I understand they made you manager of this here great team. Why not? So you're the manager. I'm the manager. Well, as the... Do you know the... Ma you know all the people's names? You know, I'd like to be able to start, say hi to them when I see them in the street. Well, sure, I'll introduce you to the boys. They give them funny names, though, Lou. Oh, I heard they give them very funny names. Uh, let's see now. On the team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. Uh, uh, are you the manager? Yes. You know the guy's name? I sure do. Well, tell me the guy's names. I say who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. Uh, and then you... Uh, are you the manager? Yes. You know the guy's names. I'm telling you their names. Well, who's on first? Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first base. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first base? What are you asking me for? I'm asking you. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm asking you who's on first base. That's it. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first base. That's his name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I'm asking you who's on first. That's it. Well, go ahead. Tell me. Who? The guy on first. That's it. What's the guy's name on first? No. Now, what's on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm asking you. Who's on first? Now, wait a minute. Don't change the players. <clears throat> I'm not changing nobody. I'm asking you a simple question. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Now, he's on third. We're not even talking about him now. Look, look, you got a man on first base. Yes. Then tell me, what's the fellow's name playing first? Who? The guy playing first. That's his name. What's the guy's name on first? What is the guy's name on second base? Who's playing second? Who's playing first? I don't know. He's on third. Look. 
when you pay the guy off on f on first base every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> yeah, you look. You got to pay money to the guy on first. Somebody's uh, on first base. Who gets the money? Yeah. Does he give you a receipt? He does. How does he sign the who? receipt? The guy that you give the money to. Who? The guy you give the money to. That's how he signs it. That's who signs it. Yes. Well, go ahead. Tell me his name. That's it. That's who? Yeah. When you give the guy the money, does he have to sign the receipt? He does. Well, how does he sign his name? Who? The guy you give the money to. That's how he signs it. <laughs> you just don't give money to somebody without having him sign a receipt. No, who signs it? What are you asking me for? Now, now, calm down. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Well, go ahead and tell me. What's the guy's name that signs the receipt on first base? Well, now, wait a minute. What signs his own receipt? Who signs his own receipt? No, who signs his? I'm asking you when the guy on first base gives you a piece of paper. Yes, now wait. He puts his name on no, it. No, who puts his name on it? How? And what puts his name on it? How does the fella on first base look to you when he signs the receipt? Who? To you. That's how it does. How does it look to you? Who? To you. Who? To you. Who? Look. <laughs> when the guy signs his name, how does it look to you? Now that's how it looks. Who? How? Who? Who? I'm asking you, what's the guy's name on first base you give the money to? Who? After all, the man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. Who? Who is? Yes. And sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yeah, sure. All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's? Oh, third there base. There you go. I right. know. There you go. You got an outfield? Sure. What's the left fielder's name? Why? I just thought I'd ask well, you. I just thought I'd tell you. Well, what's the fellow's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. <laughs> Told you these players have crazy names. All I'm trying to figure out is what's the guy's name on left field? Now what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. There you go. Hey, you got a pitcher on this team. Well, wouldn't this be a fine team without a pitcher? Oh, what's his name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's N pitching? Now listen. Who is not... I'll break your arm if you say who's on okay, first. All right. I want to know what the pitcher's name is. What's on second? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. There you go. You got a catcher? Sure. The catcher's name? Today. Today? You don't want to tell me tomorrow, today? I'm telling you. So the catcher's name? Today. Today and tomorrow's pitching. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. That's it, it's simple. Huh, all we got is a couple of days on this team. Well, I can't help that. <laughs> all right. You know, I'm a good catcher. Now, I get behind the plate, and tomorrow's pitching on my team, and a heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Now, when this guy gets up, me being a good catcher, I'm going to throw the guy out at first base. So the guy bunts the ball. I pick up the ball. I throw the, ball, the guy out at first base. So I pick up the ball and I throw to who? Now that's the first thing you said right. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you have to do, Lou. That's all I have to do is throw the ball to first base. Now who's got it? Naturally. Now you've got it. I throw the ball to first base. Somebody's got to get the ball. Now who's got it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. 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 So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, 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 you don't. You... He gets the ball, naturally gets the no, ball. No, you throw the ball to first base. Then who gets it? Naturally. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No! Naturally gets the ball. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. Naturally. That's what I'm saying. You're not saying it that way. I said throw the ball to naturally. No, you don't. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's what I'm saying. No, it isn't. I throw the ball to first base. Somebody's got to get it. So who gets it? Naturally. That's it. Okay, now I ask you, who gets it? Naturally. Same as you. Now listen. 
You throw the ball to naturally. No, you throw the ball to who? Then who gets it? Naturally. He better get it. <laughs> so I throw the ball to first base. All right. Whoever gets it, drops the ball, the guy runs to second. Now, who picks it up the ball, throws it to what? What throws it to? I don't know. I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Good day. Another guy gets up. Hits a long fly ball to be caused. Yes. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. <laughs> What'd you say? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. <laughs> oh, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> Casey was baseball mad, had the fever and had it bad. Just to root for the hometown through every shoe. Casey Blue, on a Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go to see a show. But Miss Kate said, no, I'll tell you what you can do. Take me out to the ball game, take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. But it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. And with your news for today, this is Bob Elson reporting live with national and international news. In the United States presidential election, Democratic incumbent Franklin D. Roosevelt defeats Republican cha challenger Wendell Wilkie and becomes the first United States third term president. Author Agatha Christie's mystery novel, And Then There Were None, is published in book form in the United States. In Tacoma, Washington, the 600 foot center span of the Tacoma Narrow Bridge collapses. An earthquake in Romania kills 1,000. The Royal Navy launches the first aircraft carrier strike in history on the Italian battleship fleet anchored at Toronto Naval Base. And what is being called the Armistice Day blizzard, an unexpected blizzard killed 144 people in the Midwestern United States. Walt Disney's Fantasia is released. It is the first box office failure for Disney. An unexploded pipe bomb is found in the consolidated Edison office building. And now for sports. Hey, this is Red Barber here. A 1940s World Series matched the Cincinnati Reds against the Detroit Tigers. The Reds winning a closely contested seven-game series for their second championship 21 years after the scandal-tainted victory in 1919. Henry Quillen Bufkin Newsom, the father of Detroit star pitcher Bobo Newsom died in a Cincinnati hotel room the day after watching him win game one. Newsom came back to hurl a shutout in game five in his memory. Called on to start a third time after a single day of rest by Tiger manager Del Baker, he pitched a well in game seven until the seventh inning when the Reds scored two runs to take the lead and eventually the game in the series. The Red Star pitchers Paul Derringer and Bucky Walters won two games apiece, with Derringer winning the decisive seventh game. Walters hurled two complete games, allowing only eight hits and three runs combined. He also hit a home run in game six in the midst of his 4-0 shutout, which sent the series to game seven. And now for our weather. Good evening. The high temperature for today is 39 degrees. The record high for this day was 81 degrees. Low temperature for today is 21 degrees. The record low for this day was 14 degrees. Average humidity today, 53 degrees. Wind speed, three miles per hour. Max wind speed, five miles per hour, with just a trace of precipitation. And that's the news for November 15th, 1940. A hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go.
hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. So draw up a chair for tonight's program, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello, after this word from Pepsodent. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. Pepsodent's new and improved formula. Cleans teeth whiter than ever. Tastes brighter, too. New formula Pepsodent includes IMP. Nothing is as good as getting your teeth white. It cleans the film and stains away, all while fighting tooth decay. Get some for your family today. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. A hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. Uh hey, Costello! 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 Yeah. All right, good to see you. Now, will you listen to me, please? Uh, did you uh, go hunting with your Uncle Artie Stebbins last Saturday? What'd you say? I say, did you go hunting with your Uncle Artie Stebbins last Saturday? Oh, yeah, and a terrible thing happened. A great big bear sneaked up behind us, grabbed Uncle Artie's gun out of his hands, and stuck it in his back. What'd Uncle Artie do? Oh, what could he do? He married the bear's daughter. <laughs> Never mind that. Goodness, did you see any, did you see any big game? Oh, uh, yeah, but I saw a giraffe, but I didn't shoot him. He had a sore throat. Well, there's nothing worse than a giraffe with a sore throat. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah, what? A centipede with corns. <laughs> you dummy. I don't think you've ever been hunting in your life, and I don't believe you ever have. I, I bet you don't even have a hunting license. Huh. I have to. Here it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is no hunting license. This is a picture of Hedy Lamar. You hunt what you like, and I'll hunt what I like. <laughs> you, a hunter. Well, that's ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah. My brother and I used to hunt alligators. Alligators? Yeah. One time an alligator was just about to attack my brother-in-law. I fired both barrels of my trusty rifle. Did you kill the alligator? See this wallet? Genuine alligator? No, genuine brother-in-law. <laughs> Talk sense. Now, come here. Look at this. You see this picture? Now, I caught all those rabbits last winter. Now, how many would you say there are there? 876. That's exactly right. Wait a minute. How'd you guess that? Oh, I just counted the legs and divided by four. Uh, <laughs> Costello, have you ever been on uh, in Africa on uh, safari? No, but I've been in New York on safari. A safari in New York? Yeah, the Staten Island safari. <laughs> and the Hoboken safari. Ah, oh, come on now, that's ridiculous. There's lots of safaris in New York. Hey, hey now, listen to me though. You should have been on me, with me on my big elephant hunt. Oh, there I was, surrounded by elephants. One big bull elephant started towards me and I said to myself, I'm trapped, Abbott, I'm trapped. Should I stand, run, or stand here and shoot the bull? <laughs> You're doing so good so far. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right now. Well, I shot him. I shot the elephant and he fell and broke a tusk. Broke a what? A tusk, tusk. Oh, tusk, tusk to you too and a couple of poo-hoos. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. A tusk is valuable. Now, we use 50,000 elephants a year just to make billiard balls. My, how do they train those big clumsy beasts to do such delicate work? Listen, I can see you know nothing about elephants. Oh, yeah? Once I hunted elephants in India with an old acquaintance of mine, and an elephant sat on him. Someday, I'm going to have to go back there. Why? To scrape up an old acquaintance. <laughs> Sheesh. Hey, Abbott, did you ever shoot a zebra? Oh, yes, I did. Can I have your the zebra skin? No. Uh, what do you need with a zebra skin? Uh, my Aunt Minnie's an Alcatraz, and she needs a new fur coat with stripes. <laughs> oh, Costello, that's silly. However, I have a stuffed rhinoceros you can have. Of course, you know what a rhinoceros is, don't you? Oh, sure. It's a hippopotamus with a, with a uh, radiator cap. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh uh, come on. I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Costello, this is the last week of the big game hunting season. Now, tomorrow I'm going hunting in the high Sierras, and I'd like you to come along with me. Uh, gee, thanks, Abbott. Say, you've done a lot of hunting. Mm -hmm. What do they call those little flies that buzz around the animals? Gnats. I asked you a civil question. <laughs> what do they call those little flies? Gnats. 
Nats! Nats to you too, brother! Ah, uh, no, no, you dummy. Look, <laughs> gnats are the flies that annoy the animals. Of course, some animals have ticks. <laughs> Why don't they take those ticks and give the flies a good thrashing? <laughs> I didn't say sticks, I said ticks. For instance, the de there's deer's ticks. Deer's tick? No, well, certainly, deer ticks. Who wound them up? Ah, uh, nobody wound them up. <laughs> then what makes them tick? Somebody must have slipped them some groom and they gruel. Costello, oh, <laughs> listen to me, please. When I say deer ticks, I don't mean the deer ticks. I mean deer ticks. Have it. Let me smell your breath. Oh, uh, come on now. Please talk some sense. Listen, the deer has ticks and the ticks bother the deer. They used to bother me when I was in school. Ticks bothered you in school? Yeah, arithmetics, mathematics. <laughs> And one time, a tick got me in trouble with the teacher. Now, wait a minute. I got a tick get you in trouble with the teacher. I ticked my tongue out at the teacher, and she twounced my tweets of my trousers with a twap. Now. Costello. <laughs> Look, Lou, I'm, I'm talking about animal ticks. Hundreds of animals in the woods have ticks. Oh, that must be a pretty sound. When hundreds of animals get together and they all start ticking at once. Gee, no, now listen, Costello, listen to me. Deers have ticks. Elks have ticks. At one time, my father shot a moose with ticks. Now do you understand what I'm saying? Sure, your father moose ticks. Oh, now, listen, Costello, you're getting more stupid every day. I, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to say to you. I've tried and tried to improve your mind, but I just can't seem to get anywhere. Why don't you face it, Abbott? You're a failure. <laughs> <laughs> Another public service announcement from Brill Cream. Brill Cream, a little dab will do ya. Brill Cream, you look so debonair. Brill Cream, the guys will all pursue ya. They love to get their fingers in your hair. Men, beware. Use just a dab of Brill Cream. Just a little dab makes your hair look excitingly clean, disturbingly healthy. This man here has used two dabs. Now he's in trouble, and we refuse to be held responsible. Brill Cream, a little dab will do ya. Brill Cream, you look so debonair. Brill Cream, the gals will all pursue ya. They love to get their fingers in your hair. So pick yours up today. Brill cream, a little dab will do ya. And here for Brill cream, with for sentimental reasons, Skinny Ennis. I love you for sentimental reasons. I hope you do believe me, I'll give you my heart. I love you, and you alone were meant for me. Please give your loving heart to me, and say we'll never part. I think of you every morning, dream of you every night, darling I'm never lonely, whenever you're in sight, I love you. sentimental reasons I hope you do believe me I've given you my heart I love you for sentimental reasons I hope you do I've given you my heart. 
our sons, brothers, husbands, and sweethearts in uniform are fighting for our freedom. But are you doing your part? You can by buying war bonds. Remember, it's an investment in our country and in our future. We can win this if we pull together. Buy bonds now. Well, I'm here, Abbott. <laughs> Boy, that scared me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we're going hunting now. Don't forget about it. <laughs> and I'm ready to go hunting with you up in the mountains. All right, that's fine, Costello. How's your hunting equipment? Oh, I got the best, Abbott. Look, Cornell Wiles, old address book. Uh, Costello, <laughs> hunting is a serious sport. Now, suppose you came face to face with a big old Bruin. What would you do? I'd ask him for tickets to the Rose Bowl game. Aye, aye, aye. You know, Marilyn Maxwell and Skinny Ennis are going to meet us up at the hunting lodge. I hope you brought something along. Oh, I did, Abbott. I brought a quart bottle of bourbon just in case somebody gets the chills. What'd you bring, Abbott? Um, the chills. <laughs> uh, Costello, did you bring a gun? Why, yes. Here it is, my sawed-off shotgun. Wait a minute. Where's the handle? How do you like that? I saw it off the wrong end. <laughs> well, come on, Costello. Skinny and Marilyn are waiting for us up at the hunting lodge in the mountains. Let's go. Hi, you fat, flabby, and flat, fat-headed. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't insult Costello, Skinny. Don't be a pill. Ah, uh, Skinny's no pill. He's too long and narrow. <laughs> well, thank you, Costello. Hey, you're a capsule. <laughs> <laughs> you're a funny-looking hunter, Skinny. Do you know anything about guns? I know guns inside and out. Why, man, when I was a kid with the circus, they used to shoot me out of an air rifle. <laughs> what do you know about hunting, Costello? Have you seen that big rug, bear rug in my living room? Oh, sure. Well, I shot that bear myself. What a battle. It was either me or the bear. Well, I'm glad it was the bear. You'd make an awful lumpy rug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Costello. Here comes Marilyn Maxwell. <laughs> Hiya, boys. And hello, Louie. Honey, my chubby little chocolate chipmunk. Oh, Marilyn, my sugar-coated sharpshooter. <laughs> Plug me with the buckshot of your kisses. <laughs> oh, Louie, honey, how do you like my hunting outfit? Saks Fifth Avenue. Ooh, get a load of mine. <gasps> Army surplus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Louie, it's going to be fun hunting with you. What's your favorite wild game? Post office. <laughs> Louie, Louie, post office isn't a wild game. Oh, it is the way I play it. <laughs> oh, Louie, my little snowman, come melt in my arms. Oh, gee, Marilyn, when I'm close to you like this, I just can't seem to break away. Well, why not? <laughs> my nose is caught in the trigger of your shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> well, Louie, if you'll excuse me, I have to go up to the honey lodge and freshen up. As they say in Spanish, mañana hoy noches to you. Oh, and your mama's own nightshirt to you, too. <laughs> hey, Castillo, let's go look up on that mountaintop. Now, there's a mother stork and two little storks. Hey, Abbott, can I ask you a question? Well, certainly. When the mama stork, stork talks the things over with the little storks, who does she say brings the babies? <laughs> help! Help! Beg your pardon, partners. Is there a skinny ombre in your party? Uh, yes, there is. Why? Well, you better go over there and get them. Go for just drag them in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, who are you, stranger? Well, I'm the game warden. Yeah? What's your game, warden? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know my game, partner? I'll yell you. It's Parcheesi. <laughs> <laughs> but being up here in this wild country so much, I trained three little skunks to play bridge with me. Uh, is it a steep game? Nope. We only play for a tenth of a cent. <laughs> <laughs> no, warden, now, we're after some big game. Have you seen any hereabouts? Hereabouts? Abbott, 
I thought we came up here to shoot deer. I wouldn't shoot a poor little hereabouts for anything in the world. Anybody that could shoot a little hereabouts and make a widow out of a she-about ought to be ashamed of themselves. Oh, shut up, you idiot. How about it, Warden? Is there any big game around here? Well, there's a ferocious mountain lion that's been terrorizing the countryside. He's been killing the farmer's chickens and he's even been stealing eggs. At the price of eggs now, I don't blame him. <laughs> there's a reward of a thousand dollars to the man that gets that mountain lion. One of you boys ought to trap him. Uh, which one of us do you suggest? Why don't you try, Tubby? You got the biggest trap. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, if you shoot that lion, I'll give you the thousand dollars for his skin. I need it to make stockings. What kind of stockings can you make out of lion skin? Nylon stockings. <laughs> so long, lardhead. Hey, hey, you hear that, fellas? The line's just north of us. Which way south? Uh, <laughs> come here, you coward. You're not, you're not afraid to take a chance, are you? You understand? Yeah. Now, take this cane, you see it? Yeah. Now, the lion won't bite you if you're carrying a cane. Yeah? How fast do I have to be carrying that cane? <laughs> I ain't monkeying around with no lions, Abbott. Last time I saw a lion was in the Smoky Mountains. Well, what happened? I snapped at the lion. The lion snapped at me. And then something went whizzing past my head. What was it? Louisville. <laughs> Shh. Quiet. I hear something. Listen. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. I love you. Ouch. Costello, what was that? <laughs> That's two porcupines necking. <laughs> <laughs> double your pleasure, double your fun, with double good, double good, double mint gum. When you're looking for a treat to freshen taste and keep breath sweet, Get double smoothness, flavor too. It's the gum that's fun to chew. Double your pleasure, double your fun, with double good, double good, double make gum. <laughs> double Mint presents, from the producers of MGM, we have the yearling. Oh, Marilyn Maxwell. Sorry. Oh, boy. Oh, thank God it's radio. Blue sky smiling at me. Nothing but blue skies do I see. Bluebirds singing a song, nothing but bluebirds all day long. Never saw the sun shining bright, never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by, when you're in love, oh my, how they fly. Blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on. Nothing but blue skies do I see. Blue birds singing a song. Nothing but blue birds all day long. Never saw the sun shining so bright. Never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by. When you're in love, my, how they fly. Blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on. <laughs> all right, all right, Costello, all right now. Now take it easy, kid. I'm right in back of you. Don't worry about me. Now here's the mouth of the cave. Now go on in there. That's a pal for you. Now I, I let you go in, didn't I? Now get that line. 
You want me to go and get the lion? Well, certainly, I'm your friend. Well, why don't you go get the lion? Ah, uh, what do you mean? You want me to go in? I have a family. Oh, well, what have I got? Uh, never mind that, what you've got. You get on in there and get that lion. Okay. Hey, what's the matter? Are you scared? Look at you, your knees are knocking. <laughs> I always knock before entering a cave. <laughs> Take it easy, buck up, Costello. And here, and make that lion believe that you're not afraid of it. I could never be that deceitful. <laughs> now, you've got to think of those poor people who've lost their cattle and their chickens and their eggs on account of that lion. How can you face them, Costello? Think of it. How can you face them when they may be starving? How can I face the lion? He may be starving. Oh, there you are, Louie, honey. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I know you're going into that cave to kill that lion just for me. I am? Yes. And Louie, honey, I'd do anything for you. Why, I'd climb the highest mountain, and I'd swim the deepest river. How do you like that? Here I am, facing death, and this dame is going to go out climbing and swimming. <laughs> okay, I'll go in, but if that lion runs out, don't nobody shoot at him. Why not? I could be inside of him. <laughs> Who's afraid of the big bad lion, the big bad lion, the big bad lion? Who's afraid of the big bad lion? Uh, 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 uh. Gee, it's certainly dark in this lion's cave. Why don't you light a match? Who said that? It's me, the lion. <laughs> what do you know? A talking lion. I gotta tell Abbott and Skinny and Marilyn about this. Oh, no, no, you, you must never tell anyone. I'm, I'm a hermit and I just hate people. <laughs> <laughs> I wear this lion skin to scare them away. I live in this cave all alone. How did you find this cave with all the housing shortage? I subleased it from a bear that went on the road with a skating app. <laughs> You, you must get very lonesome up here alone. Why don't you get a roommate? Oh, I had a roommate, an elk, and then the meat shortage came along. <laughs> you mean that you, uh... <laughs> hey, you see this tooth hanging on this watch chain? Yeah. Well, it ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mr. Hermit, my girlfriend is outside. I promised that I'd bring out a lion. Give me the lion skin, I'll take it out there, and everybody will think you're dead, and nobody will bother you again. Oh, oh, here, take the skin. Oh, goody, goody. Now I, won't, now I can be a real hermit, and then I won't be bothered by Lucille Ball, Betty Grable, or Marilyn Maxwell. Gee, they all call you? No, that's what bothers me. <laughs> Who's afraid of the big bad lion? The big bad lion, the big bad lion. Who's afraid of the big bad lion? Ha, 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 ha. Say, look, here comes Costello out of the cave. Oh, my hero. Look, he has the lion skin. Who is the greatest hunter of them all? Bring him back alive, Costello. When there's danger, who's the one they call? Bring him back alive, Costello. Once I found a baby leopard, with milk I filled his tummy, and then in some Egyptian tune I helped him find his mummy. He taught Tarzan everything he knows. When in danger, he's not yellow. Who looks dapper in his hunting clothes, and no one but my handsome fellow. One day I caught a tiger, I wasn't even trying, and in the movie house I caught the Metro Golden Lion. <laughs> Brave, yes indeedy, a threat to Clyde Beatty. The greatest hunter of them all. Costello. Yeah? You've hunted a lot of big game. Tell me, did you ever hunt bear? Oh, I can't, Abbott. The bushes tickle me. <laughs> Once I saw a mink, though. I saw a mink playing in the woods. I picked him up and I said to him, Though you be a coat for Lana Turner, laugh, mink, laugh. Though you be a lovely hat for Myrna, laugh, mink, laugh. At Cyril's house you'll have the best table, Think of all those cold nights with Betty Grable, Shapiro. <laughs> then you'll be on display at Wheelchair Boulevard. Giggle, mink, giggle. All your cares will vanish if your tails will wiggle, mink, wiggle. Don't be depressed. Keep your skin up. When you see Frank Buck, just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Louie, honey, my brave adventurer. Someday you must take me hunting with you. I will, Marilyn, my love. And you can ride on my papa jackass. A, a papa jackass? 
<laughs> well, how do you know he's married? Uh, all jackasses are married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hero. Let's celebrate tonight. We'll go to the smartest restaurant for dinner, see the best show in town, and then visit the swankiest nightclubs. Then, I'll kiss you goodnight and... After you've gone and left me crying, after you've gone, there's no denying how lonesome I'll be, there's no one I'll see. Until she finds another sucker like me. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows his jungle's better than a book? Bring him back alive, Costello. Who'll charm a snake with one hypnotic look? Bring him back alive, Costello. I caught a baby penguin. He looks so awful cute. I haven't got the penguin, but I'm wearing his dress suit. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes the wildest trapper look so tame? No one else but Lena Costello. He makes the others hang their heads in shame. He's so groovy, he's so mellow. I've captured famous animals from every living herd. I even caught a Detroit tiger sliding into third. <laughs> Brave, yes, indeedy, a threat to Clyde Beatty. The greatest hunter of them all. Hey, I'm a the greatest hunter of them all. Boy. Oh boy, that was a tough battle, but I won. Hey Abbott, here's the lion skin. Wait a minute, Costello. There's something phony about this. Turn that skin over. Aha, I thought so. There's a label on that lion skin, Costello. Come on, read it. Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> The boys will be right back after these words from Chiquita. Hello, amigos. I'm Chiquita Banana, and I come to say bananas have to ripen in a certain way when they're flecked with brown and heavy gold on you. Bananas taste the best and are the best for you. Uh, you can put them in a salad, or you can put them in a pie. Any way you want to eat them, it's impossible to beat them. But bananas like the climate of a very, very tropical equator. So you should never put bananas in your refrigerator. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Delicious from end to end. Bananas are a fun, healthy snack your family loves. Chiquita banana, pick at least one a day. And here are Abbott and Costello with a final word. By the way, Costello, the December 10th issue of Look Magazine has printed the pictures of your big barbecue party for the kids. Yeah, did you see it, Abbott? I did. I saw pictures of you, your wife, I saw your kids' pictures and my picture, but I didn't see my wife's Betty's pictures, and I know they took Betty's picture. Now, where's my wife's picture, and why wasn't it in there? Well, the fellow that took your wife's picture couldn't develop it. Why not? He was afraid to get into the dark room alone with it. Ah, <laughs> uh, good night, folks. <laughs> Congratulations on bagging your Brook Brothers. <laughs> oh, Costello. Jeez. Okay. <sighs> Be sure to tune in November 29th for a great program sponsored by Creative Art League program Old Time Radio, when we will bring you Blondie and Dagwood and Blondie's Big Dinner. I hope you all enjoyed tonight's show. I gotta tell you, working with these guys is like working with a bunch of middle schoolers. <laughs> and, you said, fault. And, <laughs> and, and you said, and you saw them on a good night. 
Patrick, I told you, you got to get the clothes that just rip off, you know. You just, you know. <sighs> I want to take this opportunity to introduce the cast to you. Um, there's, uh, now listen, the white truck's out front, so, you know, just anyways. Uh, listen, uh, our commercial spokesperson and one of our vocalists over here, Miss Lynette Wheeler. And our music arranger, vocal coach, and uh, Chiquita Banana Lady, cha cha cha, who's Denise Klein. <laughs> the man of many voices, our announcer, all three members of our new staff, product spokesperson, and now, now and actually next week he'll be uh, premiering his Quick Change Act, uh, Mr. Patrick Smith. Playing the talented Skinny Ennis, our, and, our, and our hermit lion, Mr. Jeremiah Reeve. Thank you, Jeremiah. <laughs> Playing the lovely Marilyn Maxwell, Louis Sweetie, and local fashion plate, Miss Stephanie Moop. <laughs> and the stars of our show, Norm Klein and Larry Princeton as Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. I'm Tag Evans, your director. Have a wonderful evening. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. KCAL is off the air. And we're clear. I'm telling you, we got to get a new technician. I'm tired. I don't get paid to turn that light off and on. I'll tell you what. I read the script's all I'm supposed to be doing. You were in the closet again, weren't you? I figured if you came out, I might as well do